Hello everyone and welcome back. It is January now and it is time to start doing some work on these trees before they wake up from their winter slumber. This here of course is the Sharps Pygmy. Now this tree I didn't really get any fall color on this year which I was kind of disappointed in but what happened was the very first day of November, November 1st, here in South Carolina we ended up with five inches of snow on the ground and it lasted for about two days but as a consequence the, this tree went immediately into dormancy. As you can see, it, it did suffer, I guess you could say, some frost damage. Uh, leaves typically don't stay on this species of Japanese maple over the winter, although there are some species of maples that it does. I have one, a chalk bark maple, that the leaves stay on. But that immediate freeze cold front thing that came through and all the snow that we got really kind of instantly, if you will, put this thing to sleep. Last year, I got a ton of back budding down the branches on this tree, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And because of that, that's going to allow us to bring this foliage mass in even further back into the central portions of these main branches, which in turn is going to give us a little bit smaller tree, but it's going to give the appearance of a more massive trunk. Now, this trunk is pretty good size now as it is. It's about the size of a coffee can. But what we're going to do today is we're going to just bring this foliage mass way back again to some of the back budding that we got and then from there we're going to create our tertiary branches and our new foliage mass so stay tuned okay let's go ahead and get started um, I'm looking back into the tree here a couple places like for instance right here on this front branch I made our cut last year where there was a larger branch that came out through here and it looks like it's completely healed over so that's a good sign that lets me know that there's a healthy root mass underneath there that's pushing a lot of energy into this tree which is going to help us with healing over what we're going to be cutting back today. Now the, the two tools that I'm going to be utilizing to do all the work here is going to be a 12 inch set of concave cutters, okay? This is a 12 inch edition and this is an 8 inch concave cutter. So these are the two that I'm going to be using to do the majority of this work. Um, Japanese maples have a tendency on some of these larger branches to be a little bit tough so I wanted to use a larger set as to not bend these because if you bend these and get these jaws out of a line they don't really cut well anymore matter of fact no, this one's still okay sometimes I get a little carried away and I bend them so what we're going to do is we're going to start here at the bottom of the tree and for instance this lower branch here I've got a large thick branch that comes out to these two smaller branches but right in front of those two I've got this real fine tracery branch and I think what I'm going to want to do is try to cut back to it eliminating this large section here so we're going to kind of go around the entire tree doing that and bringing everything in so by the time the foliage mass gets this size when it's finished or maybe even a little bit smaller than this it's going to have you know, the thickest branches closest into the trunk of the tree and they can progressively get smaller as they get up to the growing tips. Um, one other tool I'm going to grab, and it's not going to actually be for work on the tree, but it's just going to be wire cutters to cut these guy wires off the tree. I used some guy wires last year to move some branches into place versus wiring the actual branch itself. I, I find that whenever I can do that, that helps because of the time constraints that I have and sometimes I can't get out here and get the wire rem removed off these trees like I need to and of course what ends up happening is they start digging in and that's never a good thing. So we'll just free these branches. You can see these branches are jumping back a little bit up kind of where they were before but not quite to where they were before. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the large concave cutter and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to cut back this large piece. Now, I, I anticipated this being a sacrifice branch, that's why I used this large piece of wire, but you can see it's kind of a, it gets, it's very thick, it does have a lot of nice branching, but it's got a nasty wound site there from where we cut it last year, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's right here at the tip of this wound site, it's completely healed over. So, I anticipate that same thing happening this year. And what we're left with is this smaller, finer twig, which is what we're after. And eventually, that will get cut back as well, so we can get some more ramification in here. But for now, we're going to go ahead and just work it back. 
Now what I do is when I cut these back to where another branch is that I'm going to be keeping, I, I kind of sneak up on it. What I mean by sneak up on it is I don't go in there and cut it exactly where I mean to the very first cut. I'll cut about an inch or so beyond that and then I'll make successive cuts and kind of sneak up to the crotch where those two branches came through. That way I kind of have a nice smooth transition. Okay, this one here is a large one. We've got a whole mess of fine ones here as well, so we're going to cut back to those, eliminating this large one here. And then we're going to sneak up on it. Perfect. The rest of these are pretty fine, so I'm going to leave that one alone. But that, that's that branch done for this year. We've got some back budding at a cut site here before, which is awesome. Now some of this tracery here, we're going to cut back to this stuff as well to bring it in a little bit tighter. And as a consequence, it's going to push new branching and new tertiary branching here as well. Um, this back branch here has always bothered me. It's, it's long, straight, and very thick for where it is on the tree. <clears throat> now I've got a few few areas back here that have some back branching on them. It's not quite to where I want it to be in order to remove the whole thing, but I can now reduce it back to here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to eliminate this big large portion and focus on these this tracery of twigs back in here. I still want to cut it back even further. Maybe another four to six inches back in from where this is even. Um, and I've got some back budding back here so I can do it, just I don't want to do it this year. I want to let this back budding of branches that's in here now get a little bit stronger because now they're going to have a lot more light because this isn't going to be blocking it. And then that way I can cut back to it the following year. But anything that I have out here that I've got a large branch, like for instance this one here, I can go ahead and just eliminate that and then sneak up in here and make my transition cut. Just one. I've got one more just to kind of tighten up in here in this to this area. Perfect. <clears throat> you know, we're just going to go ahead and go around the entire tree and do the same operation and bring everything in as far as we can. wherever we can, we're just going to leave smaller branches in their place. And that's what we're going to build our final branch structure on this tree with. <clears throat> this is something you just take your time doing. You don't have to do it all even in a day per se. Um, it did rain today so this tree is pushing some sap not too much worried about it bleeding out or anything like that. I just, I, I was looking at the bud tips and I noticed that they are just starting to swell. And when you notice the bud tips just starting to swell, that's when you want to go ahead and get this work done. Because after they start swelling is when they start coming out. So we're going to go ahead and continue doing this operation to this tree. And once we get the large branches eliminated, then we'll revisit the tree and then I'll show you what I'm going to be doing to bring the foliage mass in even further with cutting the tertiary branches and maybe we'll do a close-up of that at that point in time. Before we do that I'm going to go ahead and find a branch here that I'm going to end up cutting back to and see if I can get a close-up on it to kind of show you what I'm referring to when I do this. It's a lot to take out of there, but I think it's going to be a lot better if I do that. Okay, <clears throat> let's do this one here. Pretty drastic cut. It's going to take place, but I think it's going to be better for it. Alright, if you look at this main branch right here, okay, it's very thick all the way up. I've got this lower branch here 
and this branch here and then it's just a straight shot up and then some more branching and it just kind of gets congested once it gets up to this point. I've got quite a bit of back branching below that spot in this area here. So I'm actually going to cut all of this back clear down to here. Utilizing these two branches and I'm going to wire these into position. I'm going to have to wire this branch here up to fill this area and wire this branch kind of out in this direction here. But this is just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So I'm actually going to come into the tree about here. And this branch is a little large to be trying to make a all at once cut. So I'm going to go halfway through it. I'm going to come back in again. Go halfway through it again. And then finally eliminate the entire branch. Now, I forgot to... It was wired to another branch that I was trying to get into position, so we've eliminated this huge, thick... Oops, sorry. Now we've removed this huge, thick, congested part of this tree. Now, it's going to look very bare at the beginning of the season, but by the end of the season, it's probably going to fill back in. But I wanted to get rid of all that. In turn, keeping these. This one here and this one here. So what I'm going to do next, now that I've got the main branch off, I guess what I can refer to as sneaking up on it, I'm going to come back in here a little bit closer. And I'm going to cut again. back in here to where this crotch is. Make a nice smooth transition so when it heals over it won't look unsightly. It'll look more natural. It'll be a natural transition once that heals over. It won't be a nice it won't be an ugly bulge, it'll be a nice smooth transition. Okay. That'll work. So now let me zoom back out so you can see that side of the tree again. Looks kind of bare now because there's nothing filling this void. But when I take this branch here and bring it up, I have a smaller branch here. I can move this branch over. Eventually, this large hole that you're seeing here will be filled with branches. I've got another small branch back here that will grow up into this area as well, and it's going to ramify while it grows because we're going to keep cutting it back and letting it split into more and more branches. So we're going to continue going around the whole tree, doing this technique to the tree, and then we'll come back and revisit it after we have that done. Stay with us. Okay, this is all the large branches that I feel comfortable with removing this growing season. Um, I've still got this large one here that I'm not real happy about. I'd like to see it reduced maybe a little bit smaller. It's now the largest branch, the highest up on the tree. It's it's got a lot of back budding, so I'm going to let that kind of grow this year, hopefully unchecked, and, and hopefully it'll fill in the voids that I need to where I can cut it back as well. well let me do a quick 360 of the tree here for you so you can see what we've done. Um, there was a really large branch here in the center that came straight up. It had to go as well. <clears throat> I mean, large, large branch. It was this branch right here. I mean, it's about the size of my thumb and it's at the very top of the tree which 
isn't conducive, in my opinion, to where this tree needs to be. So you can see where we've eliminated quite a few of these larger branches, which has left a large void here at the top and a large void here at the side. <clears throat> and how we're going to fix that, and I want to, this, this branch here and this branch here are the two that are still kind of bothering me. This here is large as well, but I've been able to cut it back and it's branched out into two to three now. Um, smaller branches, so it's, it's still okay. That's actually the main leader of the tree, so I would expect that part of it to be fairly thick as it goes up to the bottom end of the tree because it's going to be constantly branching out and getting smaller as well. <clears throat> so back to this open space right here. Right here in the back of this tree and right in the very center, it's very open now. There's almost nothing there. What I'm going to be doing now to fix that is after I get all these finer branches cut back, and we're going to kind of do the same technique to these, these finer branches here. I've got like long branches that at the very end they start splitting off into pairs and, and getting more ramified way out here, but really they need to have that back towards the inside of the trees. I'm going to look for the smallest, weakest branch and I'm going to cut back to that, eliminating everything outside of that and then that is what I'm going to use to build on the ramification. Once I get all that cut back then we're going to start wiring some of these main branches in towards the center and we're going to use the technique similar to what we had earlier where we're going to take a piece of inner line, air, I'm sorry, fishing airline tubing like for a fish tank and wrap it around the outside of the branch take that wire to a branch on the opposite side of where those two are so you've got this situation and then we're going to wire them together to bring them up like this and then that'll fill in that big hole that's in the top of the canopy. So now that we're done with the, big, the large work we're going to take our smaller concave cutters we're going to come in here and we're going to cut back some of the smaller stuff back in to kind of bring everything back in and compact it even more. Now we start at the bottom of the tree and work my way up from there. Some of these are going to get eliminated altogether, and some of them are just going to get cut back to smaller buds, or smaller branches for that matter. I'm going to just take one side of the tree and work it, and then I'll go around to the other side. And we're just going to keep doing that until we get to a point where we've got all that done, and then we'll work on the wiring. Okay, I've got a couple of these on here now to um, move these closer towards this central location on the tree. And basically what I've done is I've selected two branches that are about the same diameter. <clears throat> so they're kind of a opposing force to one another. And I've wrapped the airline tubing around them. Or you can also, if you just want to move one branch and not both branches, you can select the branch that you want to bend and then see if you can find a little bit thicker one on the other side. So the, uh, the thicker side obviously isn't going to move as much as the smaller side or the thinner side, whichever you prefer. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this wire and wrap it around the tree loosely. I don't want it to be real tight because I don't want it to dig in and cause a scar. And what I'm going to do is take this opposite side here 
and again put a piece of the airline tubing because again I don't want to scar anything. Just weave it through the branching. Get it around the tree. And what I'm going to do get that branch out from underneath there is so one number one. I'm going to lift up the side that I want to move. And when I do that, bring the airline tubing around the back side of the opposite branch. So we don't have any issues there. And once I have the branches, the smaller one in place, now I'm just going to wrap this lot, this wire around, to lock it into position. Come in here, cut off my excess wire. And then do a couple wraps just to secure it in position. Now both outside edges where the pressure is has that airline tubing which is going to help keep from the wire cutting in because we're not going to leave it on a real real long time but it does need to be left on there long enough to keep these branches, let these branches set themselves in position. And now we've got a lot of these branches up in a position where it was filling that large void from where we eliminated those larger branches. Now what I can also do is bring these other branches and move these other branches around into the positions that they need to be in on the tree. <clears throat> using that very same similar technique or using a little bit different technique depending on what I need to do. Um, like this back, this branch back here for instance, this branch right here needs to be moved up into this position from where it is clear down here. It needs, to, it needs to come up and over to here. And in order to do that, I'm going to tie it to just the piece of wire here. I'm going to bring it down and loop it around the outside of this branch. So then this branch will be sitting in this position here now, which is going to help fill in this negative space that we have here. I'm going to do something very similar with this branch here as well. It's going to be coming up to right here because I've got one directly below it that's doing the outer silhouette. So this is going to be coming up here like this. So we'll go ahead and get those finished up and then we'll come back. I'm going to do a little bit more trimming to bring this stuff kind of in a little bit tighter than it is now as well. but. Once I get finished, hopefully you'll see the smaller foliage mass that I have now makes the appearance that the trunk is a lot larger. So stick with us and we'll get back in a few moments. All right, here we have the tree after we've done the pruning technique as well as the wiring technique to get this tree a little bit more compact. In my opinion, I believe that it makes the tree trunk look thicker, makes the tree look more dynamic, makes the tree look a little more, I guess you could say, ancient because it's more in, I guess, an aspect ratio that's realistic for the size of the tree. So I'll do a quick 360 here. We're going to get this one back out on the bench, do what we always do feed it, water it, give it plenty of sunshine, and it should respond very well. The uh, tree is bleeding, so you'll see a little bit of the wound sealer that I've put on there kind of leaking off. What I'm going to have to do is eventually either later on today or tomorrow it will have stopped the bleeding process. It will have compartmentalized the wounds that are on the tree. Um, at that point in time I'm going to come back out and do another round of the wound sealant. I wanted to get some on there now just to help cover that area. <clears throat> and then like I said before we'll come back and do another application of the wound sealant. This is where I see the front of the tree still. 
it's showing the widest base, basal flare, the best looking nabari, and all the branches are in proper position. I see this branch potentially needing to get moved over a little bit, but I have this smaller growing branch here, that, so when I eliminate this larger portion, I'll be able to rebuild with these smaller ones behind it. <clears throat> There's a couple fine twigs that I need to do a little tweaking on before I put it back out there, but this is the gist of what I wanted to do this year as far as styling is concerned. Thank you for watching.